So, trig quiz number one. Mr. Duick, I found some of these tough. Yeah, that's okay. Number one says, find the missing side. Okay. Do I have an angle in number one, Colleen? Is there... No, they gave me the 90, but they didn't give me anything here, so I'm not using Sokotoa. Do I know two sides? Then I can find the third by going Pythagoras. And... Cirque. Uh Pythagoras says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And what I have to remember with Pythagoras, Colleen, is the hypotenuse always goes where c squared is. It's going to be 37 squared x squared plus 35 squared. So, so how would I get the x squared by itself? Subtract the what? 35 squared, right? In fact, I'm going to go like this on my calculator because I'm running out of room here. I'm going to go and I'm going to turn my calculator on if I can. Here we go. Clear, clear, clear. And let's make sure I'm in degrees. I am. It's going to be 37 squared minus 35 squared. X squared ends up being... 144. How can I figure out how big x is? Oh, pause. I got a late student. So how do I get rid of the squared? Square root. Square root 144. Uh, Kara, 12? Yeah. Huh? Hey, one mark. Most common mistake kids make here, Emma, there's two. First is they always want to put the x by itself. No, no, no. If the hypotenuse is one that you know, the x ends up over here, and you got to do some subtracting. Second most common mistake is they want to go... 35, 30, 37, take away 35, and then square the answer. No, it's 37 squared, take away 35 squared. And I, I'm sorry I didn't give enough room for me to be able to show the minus 35 from squared from both sides here. I'm running out of room here. We're awake? Okay. Example two. Mr. Duick, bat in hand, is on a 15-meter building. Ah, oh, there's a picture. He sees Tanner on a 10-meter building. The buildings are six meters apart. And there is a ramp going in between the two buildings. Find the length of the ramp separating Tanner from imminent death. Would you really kill Tanner, Mr. Dick? No, it's sarcasm. It's teasing. Um, some keys here. Joel, you ready? How far from here to here? So how from here to here? I'm going to do that because I want to get a triangle. Hey, there's my triangle. The second re realization I have to make is this, Joel. How far from here to here? from here to here do I know an angle say no then it's going to be Pythagoras a squared plus b squared equals c squared now this time I don't know the hypotenuse so the x will end up over here 5 squared plus 6 squared Cheyenne, is the x squared by itself already? Yep. So I'm going to type in the left on my calculator. Have I gone on my rant about why it's useful having a good calculator yet? I wasn't kidding at the beginning of the year, Rachel. Oh, you have a good graphing one. Never mind. How far from here to here? Look up. How far from here to here? See it? 15. So left over, right? Speaking of, Cheyenne, how to get rid of a squared? So I'm going to be square root of 61, which is not going to work out evenly. I don't care. Uh, square root of 61. 7.81? 7.8? I didn't say how many decimal places to go to. Oh, I've told you, when in doubt, go to 2. That's always a nice, safe one. Uh, meters. In physics, I'd take a mark off. If you didn't say meters in math, I won't. Good. Piece of cake. Number three says, find the given ratio in fraction form. Say what? I'm not sure what they're asking. I think they just want what over what. Huh? Joel, what should I have written at the top of the page if I was a good test writer? Darn right. Let's do that, Mr. Duick. S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. Because that way, when I see sine of alpha... I know that it's opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite. 
over hypotenuse. 5 over 13. One mark. Tangent is, uh, is, Dave is what? Over what? Oh, opposite over adjacent. Now it's of beta, this thing. Opposite over, 12 over 5. Kiara, what'd you say for cosine of alpha? Adjacent over hypotenuse, what over what? 12 over 13. So on your test, that's how I'll test, do you know the difference between opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse? I'll give you a triangle, and I'll say, tell me the fractions. Now we're getting into actual cross-multiplying trig. It says, find the missing side or angle. They gave me the angle, this one right here, so I label my sides. Rob, this x, opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? How about the 25? Which trig function has uh, ah in it? What always goes next to the trig function? The angle. And that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Am I going to use the shift button to find this? No, no, no. I only use that, Colleen, to find an angle. Here I can cross multiply. Colleen, it's going to be x times 1. What is x times 1? 25 times sines, sorry, times cosine of 72. And I'm just going to write 25 cos. 72. I'll do the math later. Then I ask myself, Zach, self is the x by itself? Is the x by itself? Oh, then I don't need to do any more. Now I can't go straight to my calculator. If not, I might have to do some dividing or multiplying. But here, I think I'm done. It's going to be 25 cos 72. Do you all get uh, 7.73? Sorry? So it's the nearest tenth. There. 7.7. .7. If you went to one more decimal place, I won't freak out. B. Here's the angle that they gave me. Shells, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. I agree. How about here? I agree. Which trig function? Yeah. What Shallon was doing in Mexico. What goes next to the trig function? Was the weather at least nice while you were down there? Rats. I mean, fine. Uh, Chelsea equals what over what? This time the x is on the bottom. Shannon, I'm still going to cross multiply, but this time it's going to look a little differently. It's going to be 8.2 times 1, which is just 8.2 equals x times tan 18, and Shan, I just write x tan 18. I'll do the math later, but I've cross-multiplied, right? This times this equals that times that. My one times table, Rob, I'm pretty good at. The other one I just write. Now, here's the, here's the issue. Chelsea, is the x by itself? Say no. No. I want to move this tan 18 over. How? Well, what's happening between the x and the tan? So how will I move it over? Divide. I'm going to get this. X is going to end up being 8.2 divided by the tan of 18. It's going to end up being 8.2 divided by the tan of 18. Twenty-five point two. Uh, millimeters. Is that okay, Ashley? Yep. C. Ashley, my child, here I notice this one's a bit different because I don't know the angle, although they've told me this is the one we're looking at. I start out the same way, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. I totally agree with you. How about this one here? Let's see, where's the 90? Right there? What's always across from the 90? It's the hypotenuse. Okay? Yeah, yeah? Which trig function is O, H? 
What always goes next to the trig function? The angle. And what's the angle this time? It's not a number. It's a variable. That weird thing. Remember what we called it? What do we call it? Joel, what do we call it? Theta. Theta. Equals, Joel, what over what? Over 14, Mr. Duick. 14. Three. Now, this part, Nicole, this part, Adrian, sorry, you have to memorize this part. The fact that if you don't know the angle, it's not cross multiply, don't start. It's go to your calculator. How do I find an angle? How do I tell my computer inside my calculator that I'm going backwards? Second function or inverse or shift button, whatever it's called on your calculator, it's almost always in the top left corner. Which trig function? Ashley, sine, bracket, mine already does an open bracket, 6.4 divided by 14.3, close bracket. And this will give me the original angle we started out with, which is 26.6 degrees. Okay. JN is looking out a window 25 meters above the ground. Hi, Fan. Mr. Duick carefully measures the angle of elevation at 20 degrees. Mr. Duick fires his air zuka. Find the distance the air has to travel before it hits Cheyenne. Yeah, I know. I can part your hair on the right. Hey, what does BELP stand for? Draw a little picture, because this is a word problem. What will appear somewhere in the trick picture in the trig unit, Zach? What will always appear somewhere in the picture in the trig unit? What shape will always appear somewhere? Yeah. So let's visualize. Here's Mr. Duick looking up at Cheyenne. How about something like that? So here's Cheyenne. Here's Duick. Angle of elevation, that's this one here, 20 degrees. 25 meters above the ground. Am I going to put the 25 on the slanty side, the flat side, or the vertical side? Vertical, yeah, oh, above the ground, sure. Vertical. Find the distance the air has to travel before it hits Cheyenne. I'll call that x. Am I going to put the x on the slanty side or the horizontal flat side? Joel, now that I've got my diagram right, ready, Tatiana? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? I agree. How about here? Sorry, I can't hear. Hypotenuse, yes. Which trig function? Did you write Sokotoa on the top of your quiz? Folks, I kid you not. I kid you not. That's just throwing away easy marks. Do it right now. Oh, you did? You did? I'm sorry. I thought you said no. You, by the way, can you sit up so I can kind of see? There we go. Because I was like, hello, but I can't get up any higher. Oh, wait a minute. I got my new chair today. No, nope, that's as high as it goes. Sorry. Uh, which trick function? Sign? Yes. What always goes next to the trig function? The angle. What's the angle this time? 20. Tatiana equals 1 over what? x over 25 or 25 over x? Which one? I disagree. Yo. This acronym right here. O and H tells you S for sign. A and H on your triangle tells you C for cos, O and A. Well, we always label them opposite adjacent. We label the sides, okay? Yeah, I'll get to you in a second. If you've been away, I'll get you caught up, okay? Nicole, since you were away, 
Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. What would that be in this triangle? What over what? Yeah, see, I think it's 25 over x, not x over 25. The x is on the bottom. I'm still going to cross multiply. 25 times 1, 25. x times sine 20 equals x sine 20. Do I have the x by itself, Alexis? No? Oh, I got to go one step further then. How would I get the x by itself? How would I move this sine 20 over? I agree with you. x ends up being, take the 25 and divide it by the sine of 20. How far will the air have to travel? Mr. Duick, can we do this as an experiment? No. Mainly because 25 meters, I don't think we have anywhere 25 meters high. 25 divided by the sine of 20. The air would travel 73.1 meters. My small air zooka wouldn't travel that far. The big one over there on a calm day or indoors, maybe. Close. Last one, number six. It says, looking out from her condo in the Bahamas, Tasha sees two islands, A and B. Use the diagram below to find X and Y. Okay. Hmm. Well, I can find X first. There's the angle. So, Cheyenne, we would temporarily ignore this triangle here. Just looking at the left-hand triangle, a small, tiny one. This is the angle, and we would ask ourselves, this x opposite adjacent or hypotenuse? And I would say to myself, Zach, what? Opposite adjacent or hypotenuse, this x? I agree. What about this 128? I agree. Which trig function has the O and the H in it? See how we put that together? What always goes next to the trig function, Zach? Which I know. And it's opposite over hypotenuse. Zach, how am I going to solve this? Am I going to use my shift or second function or inverse button? No. What then? Zach, what's x times 1? Equals 128 times sine 42 is just 128 times sine 42. Can you make it, Kiara? Is the x by itself already? Woohoo! x ends up being... Eighty-five point six meters. Adrian, what else do they want me to find? Because I asked you to. What else do they want me to find? I'll never get tired of that joke ever. <laughs> oh, I just laugh every time. Um, how can I find why? Well, let's see. I know that, I think this is 240 right here. I don't think it's meant to be the whole long length. Although it's not a very clear diagram, I'd give you a better one on a test. Uh, oh, and I now know X is 85.6. Hey, I don't need an angle. Emma, you know what I can use instead? It begins with the letter P and rhymes with Agoras. I think I can use Pythagoras. I think what I can do is I can go like this. In the right-hand triangle, 85.6 squared plus 240 squared equals y squared. Rob, is the y squared by itself already? Oh, great. 80, oh, you know what? I'll use the full value. This number squared plus 240 squared equals. And Rob, how do I get rid of a squared? Square root. 254.8 254.8 meters there it is give yourself a score out of one mark for each blank so I think it ends up being out of like 11 or something like that isn't it which for some reason isn't on this sheet but I think I added it to yours give yourself a score out of 11 please 
can you get out or turn to, please, the homework from last day, which was Lesson 5, Solving Two Triangle Problems. Now, Kira said to say, so I'm going to talk about the past of the okay? Anyway, for homework? Problems of the homework, anybody? The vibe. Any questions for homework? So what you want to now is one of those that's 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 time. Any questions from the homework, folks? These were tough. These were tough. These were tough. And today is part two of two triangle questions. Yeah. Sorry? 2C? This one here? The 3D one? Yep. Okay. I'm going to get you started, and then I'll let you try it the rest of the way yourself. There's two triangles in this question, and it's hard because... Quiet, please. Because I'm doing a 3D diagram on flat two-dimensional paper, you have to use your imagination a little bit as well. The two triangles are... This one here on the floor. Whoop. And then this one here diagonally. Can I redraw them? Here's the diagonal one, as though we were looking at the room from the side. So that's A, G, H. And I know that this is 8. Do I know anything else than this triangle? Nope. Now they want me to find that, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm going to need to find, well, this, I think, in order to find that. How can I find this? Well, that goes to this triangle, which I'm going to draw now as well. This triangle goes A, D, H, where this is 12 and this is 9. Right? I think you just saw it. Tell me what you're going to do in the bottom triangle. Yeah, what do we call that? Mystery begins the letter P and rhymes with agoras. Okay, we're going to use Pythagoras. When we use Pythagoras, we can find that. Which happens to be that, because that's A to H, that's A to H. Yeah? And then what can I do in this triangle? to find x. Pythagoras again. It's Py this is Pythagoras twice. Okay. By the way, did you, did you see how I handled this? This is a very tough question. My strategy was try drawing each triangle separately and maybe something will spot. Maybe I'll spot something. You know, worth putting in your back pocket as a, hey, if I can't see it, that's one of the first things I try doing. Is that all right? Any others? Well, you know what? I'll say if you have any other questions, I'll help you during today because I want to get to part two of the lesson, lesson six. Not as far as I know. Meanwhile, let's get back to the lesson, boys and girls. Lesson six. And you need your calculators out. And once again, if you don't have a calculator here, you want to sheepishly fess up, because you need one. I don't know why I keep staring in the same general location of the room. Hast thou ein calculator? Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't see it. And make sure you're in degrees. If you don't know how to do that, you better figure out how to do that. On yours, Rachel, you press the mode button, right? That's the more complicated one. And you'll notice today is solving two triangle problems part two. Okay? Uh, you may recall from last day there was three kinds of triangle problems. There was addition problems where you were able to find... They wanted you to find the whole side. You couldn't, but you could find a chunk and a chunk and add them together. There was subtraction problems where they wanted you to find a chunk of a side. You couldn't, but you could find the whole side and the other part and subtract to find the remaining section. And then there was what my friend called the stepping stone, what I've called the hopscotch questions. 
where, you know what, Shalon, you find one side to find another side to find another side. The one that David asked earlier was a stepping stone question. You couldn't find the final side without finding a side in between first. So for those of you that were away Friday, today is the same lesson, except now we're going to add word problems. However, I will, in almost every question from the homework, give you a diagram, which means it's a lot easier than going cold turkey. You'll still have to scratch your brain a little bit to fill in some of the numbers. Example one. It says two office towers are 65 meters apart. The angle of depression from the top of the shorter tower to the base of the taller tower is 68 degrees. That's this one right here. Top of the shorter to the base of the taller. The angle of elevation from the same point to the top is 22 degrees. Colleen, can you see the two triangles? Small top, big bottom triangle. Okay. A asks, how much taller is the taller tower? First of all, in this diagram, which is the number or the variable that describes how much taller the bigger tower is? Kiera, X. When it says find how much taller the taller tower is, it's find X. Now, Cheyenne, as you get good, you probably won't need to redraw it, but since X is part of this little tiny triangle, I'm just going to quickly draw it a bit bigger over here because this way I can work on it. So that's X. This is 22 degrees. Yes? Cool. Do I know anything else in this triangle here? Nod your head. What else do I know? How far from here to here? How far from here to here? How far from here to here? Hey. Okay. That little step, Nicole, you're going to have to do. That, unfortunately, I can't really help you with. I tried to walk you through it just now. But I guess the message to Tan is keep your eyes open. Move lines up and down or back and forth. See if you can put the same line over on the other diagram. Oh, cool. Opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. I agree. How about here? I agree. <gasps> Tatiana, you know what we didn't do at the top of the page? Let's do it right now. S-O-H-C-A-H-T. Oh, a Shay, and this is our little handy dandy acronym. We write it at the top of every page so that we can figure out which trig function goes with which. Every quiz, every test. So write that down if you haven't already. Sokotoa. Because now that I've done that, hey, cool. Which trig function? Tan. It's pretty obvious now. Then all I have to remember is my procedure. I've done the memorization tough part. Now it's hey, what goes next to the trig function? which is 22 equals what over what? It's in the word OA. Oh, opposite over adjacent. In this case, and then we're math 8. It's going to be cross multiply. X is going to end up being, I think, 65 times the tan of 22. And again, it's always good to practice on your calculator. What do you get? Make sure you know how you type this into your calculator. Mine is going to look different because mine automatically adds brackets and stuff because it's a little more high tech. You get 26.26 meters. The tall tower is 26.26 meters taller than the short tower. Emma, what does B want us to find? Because I asked you to. What does B want us to find? Oh, okay. First of all, read it to me. What does B want us to find? Which is what in this diagram? Ah, you're the first one to clue in. There is a way around that stupid joke. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, letter Y. Um, This triangle is big enough, I think I'm going to try writing right on here. You could redraw it over here as well, but how big is that angle? How far from here to here? How far from here to here? So you're saying that this angle, this side right there is 
65 meters. I can't quite fit it in. If you guys can, great. Colleen, here's my 68. The letter Y, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. I totally agree with you. What about this 65? I totally agree with you. Which trig function, kiddo? I totally agree with you. Oh, you go girl. What always goes next to the trig function? What's the angle in the triangle that we're looking at now? Equals what over what? Absolutely. Now what? Cross multiply. Uh, I think you'll get y times 1, which is just plain old y, equals 65 tan 68. It's my way of saying focus. I don't know where you were, but it wasn't here. Hey, uh, Sam, what'd you get? Here's what I heard. I got point a little louder, more volume. 160.9 what? No, I, I, what's, what comes after the 9? 160, because I went to two decimal places. Go to two decimal places. 100, okay, 160.88 meters. All right. Adrian, what's C asking us to find? How can I find the height? How can I find this height here? Oh, what what letters have we used? Add what plus what? Oh, the height equals x plus y, and that's why Sam. I figure let's go to two decimal places in both since we're going to add them together. Uh, Twenty six point two six. Plus 160.88, 1. 187.14. Okay. Two triangle questions, and this was an addition question when all was said and done. A couple more, we're done. Turn the page. Okay. This one looks complicated. Hey, oh, they gave us a picture. Let's not freak out. Let's just read. Really carefully. Alexis, can you read to me, please, starting after example two? Ah, help! Okay, keep going. Okay, stop. Let's look at... Oh, okay. Here's the picture. There's our freighter that's sinking. Help me, help me! Coast Guard cutter, 50 west, 15 south. Okay, now I understand that better. Keep reading, please. Gotcha. Twenty by forty-five. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to suggest Alexis. I see two triangles as well. Do you? And because they said north and east and south and west, I know those are ninety-degree angles because I know north and west are ninety to each other. Okay. Uh, which? What does it want us to find? Okay. I think the distance we're talking about is this here, yeah? Because that's how they would travel on water. You don't need to go along roads. You can go straight diagonally across the water. Let's call that, oh heck. Alexis, what letter should I put here? Because I asked you to. Uh... Now, it wants us to find which one's closer, and then by how much, I think we'll go bigger minus smaller to figure out by how much. I'm not sure, because these triangles look about the same size. I'm not sure what the answer is here ahead of time. How can I find x? And by the way, in your head, kind of cover up this triangle here. We're ignoring it. We're just looking at this one. 
So pretend this guy is temporarily not there. Joe, how can I find X? Ah, Pythagoras. Okay, you ready? You ready? Let's go one advanced step. Let's see if instead of writing a squared plus b squared equals c squared, let's see if we can start plugging in numbers right away. What squared plus what squared equals what squared? Joel, is the x squared by itself already? Oh, then let's go to our calculator right now. That gives me x squared. Oh, and then Joel, how do I get rid of a squared? Okay. Square root of that, 50.2. That's what I said, 52.2. You're right. That's x. Kayla, what do they want me to find now? The other one? Yeah. Huh? You having trouble seeing from back there? Oh, I can fix that. Yeah, but I can fix it. And we're back. Uh, I think we're trying to find Y. And... How can I find y in this triangle here? Pythagoras again. In fact, I think it's going to be 20 squared plus 45 squared equals y squared. 20 squared plus 45 squared. And then how do I get rid of the squared? Square root. Ooh, it's close. 49.2. Which one's closer, Colleen? Freighter? Uh, let's change colors, Mr. Duick. Freighter, and it says by how much? Uh, I think exactly, isn't it exactly 3? If you subtract them, isn't it 52.2 minus 49.2? Isn't it... I think by exactly three kilometers. Yep. And then it says this. At what angle from north would this vessel have to head? So here's the winner. Here's the shorter distance. When it says what angle from north, I think, Chels, we're talking about that angle there because north would be straight up. And that's the angle from straight up. Is that okay? And I used my Greek letter theta, the traditional variable for angles. The O wearing a belt. All right. Let's find the angle. How? Hey, let's label our sides. Emma, this 20, opposite of Jason Dorr hypotenuse. I totally agree. How about this 45? Which trig function? What always goes next to the trig function? The angle. What's the angle this time? Theta, don't know it. The variable equals what over what? How do I do these ones? Cross multiply? Nope. What? Oh, second function button. This is where you calculate. It does all the work, right? You go second function tangent of 20 divided by 45. And I get 20, you know what, 23.96, I think that rounds to 24 degrees. Because the 6 would make the, or you could go 23.96, so let's go 24 degrees. Theta equals 24 degrees. Last one, we're done. Joel, is that okay? Makes sense?
Okay. What do they ask me to find, Joel, in example three? What letter in the diagram that they gave me? See it there? Stay here, folks. Stay on this page. Call me silly. Silly. Shut up. Call me silly. Shut up. Uh, doesn't that diagram look an awful lot like this diagram from last day's lesson where we had to subtract, where Joel, we said, you know what? You can find the total distance, find the bottom distance, and then subtract to find the little top distance. And did you do okay on this one last day? Yeah? See, last lesson, example two. And your hint is we're going to use subtraction. I was going to do it, but you guys are zoning out a bit. You have a quiz to work on. And I think most of you are getting the hang of this. And those of you that aren't are sitting around or near people that can give you a bit of assistance. And that's great, too. Here's your homework. Try number one. Try number two. <coughs> Three is good. Ooh, a helicopter. Four is good. Five is a little overkill, I think. You want to do six? Sorry, is that what I heard? Oh, I, I'm sure that's what I heard. No? Oh, I could have sworn, Mr. Duick, please. I want more practice, Mr. Duick, please. Let me see here. Um, forest fire, seven is good. And eight. Okay, so there's a few to try. I'm not going to put a gazillion of these on your test couple. Probably one just with a diagram, two triangles, and one word problem, two triangles. That's the trig 10 in theory all review from last year stuff. So when I see you Wednesday, then we're starting the sine law and the cosine law, which is brand new. So bring your calculators, bring your brains. The pace will be picking up a little bit. Work on the take-home quiz for sure, and then start the homework. If you have lesson five finished, please hand that in.